Gluing. What's the best approach? Biology, physics or is it really chemistry? Our reporter class wants to find out. Papa can jeder kleben. Anyone can glue cardboard. Aber welcher Kleber But which glue can support the weight of a car? Stick a person to a glass facade? Or join two Teflon sheets together so tightly that not even two cars can separate them again? This is where the man with the super glue is supposed to be. Our glue pro, Pablo Walter, chemist at the world's largest glue manufacturer, Henkel. You're the man who thinks he can glue anything together. I know I can glue anything together, but I believe you don't always need as much chemistry as you use. Are you sure about that? I've two challenges for you and they say anything you can glue, they can glue too, but in different ways. And these are the challenges. Physicist Dr. Mark Hamm and biologist Dr. Birgit Veit. Three extreme bonding challenges to master. Super bonding, fast bonding and sticking the non-stickable. Super bonding. Gluing wood is not really an art, but our challenge is a tough one. Two wooden blocks have to be glued together so tightly that they will never come apart again. Not even when the weight of a car is hanging on them. But how does glue actually work? To stick things together, it has to adhere well to the surface. This is called adhesion. And it must be stable in itself, i.e. it must hold its molecules firmly together. This is called cohesion. Adhesive is usually liquid, so that it can penetrate the cracks and pores of the material easily. Only when it dries does it become solid and develops its cohesive force. This is how the adhesive becomes a stable layer between the two items that need to be bonded. Stable enough for a car? We start with the 10 by 10 cm wooden blocks. So Pablo, it's now time for the carpenter in you. Two blocks of wood, please glue them together so that they'll never come apart again. I've got professional wood glue here. That's the same stuff carpenters use. Exactly, it's really strong. The special thing about wood glue is that it sticks when it comes into contact with the residual moisture in the wood and the humidity in the air. Moisture creates molecular chains and the glue then solidifies. It takes 30 minutes for the glue to harden and it reaches its final strength after 24 hours. We fix the wooden blocks so that they won't slip out of place until that happens. The challenger, biologist Birgit Veit. She has the same task. What's her bonding method? Birgit, Pablo is sticking these two wooden blocks together with the professional wood glue. I know it will be totally solid. We've really got our work cut out to compete with that. Do you know what that is? It's quark, isn't it? Exactly. You're going to stick it with quark? Well, not quite. We'll add a bit of lime. And when we mix curd and lime, it becomes a casein glue. And this casein glue was used thousands of years ago by the Egyptians to glue wood. And it sticks just as well as a professional wood glue? Solid as a rock. Casein makes up the bulk of the proteins in quark. Casein alone has very little adhesive strength. It's only when lime is added that casein glue is created. So, 250 grams of curd with 125 grams of lime make glue. And how does it stick? The glue trick of quark-lime glue is that it only sticks when the water in the quark has evaporated. When it dries, the mixture becomes solid and sticks. To allow our casein glue to set, Klaas aligns and clamps the glue seam and leaves it for 24 hours. Then it's time to get to grips with the glue. In a scrapyard, the professional wood glue first has to show what it can do. OK, so the test construction is very simple. At the top we have the crane, in the middle we have a tension scale that shows us how much the whole thing can withstand. In the middle we have the wood with the weak point, hopefully, and the cars at the bottom. Now comes the moment of truth for your wood glue. Can the glue manage the weight? Or did chemistry promise too much? Looking good. Over a ton of weight is hanging on the glue seam and the chemical glue holds firm. Solid as a rock, nothing comes apart, test successfully passed. Not bad at all for chemistry, but now let's try biology. Same conditions as for chemistry, crane, glue seam and car at the bottom. Can the casein glue handle it? 
And you say in ancient times this glue stuck things together really well? Yes, but not cars. The quark glue has to carry the weight of the car, which after all is more than a thousand kilograms. Looks good so far, but then, at just under 500 kilos, the construction starts to wobble suspiciously. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, too bad. Too bad. Biology loses the first round, 1-0 for the glue pro and chemistry. But why didn't the casing glue hold up? The surface area was a bit small. The decisive for any glue is the surface area on which the force acts. Well, if that's the case, let's enlarge the bonding surface. Now the wooden blocks are 30 by 30 centimeters instead of 10 by 10. The bigger the gluing surface, the better it sticks. And it works. The casing glue can hold more than a ton. The point still goes to chemistry, though. Next task, quick bonding. This glass pane is about 10 meters high, really nice and smooth, and also freshly cleaned. And now we want to send a climber up there just using glue. Let's see if it works. Climbing coach Tom is to climb the glass wall. For this to work, he has to be able to hold on to something immediately. So the glue has to work quickly. This time, physicist Mark Hamm competes against our chemist and thinks his chances are good. But first, the chemist. How is your wonderful chemistry going to get the climber up there? We could use adhesive tape. So the climber slaps double-sided tape on his hand and then up he goes, or what? Well, I think we need to make a bracket of some kind. The results are trowels with double-sided adhesive tape. The trowels have a handle. This will give our climber something to hold on to. To make the tape stick, Tom has to press the trowels down very firmly. Since he can't climb and press at the same time, all the trowels have to be stuck to the window first. In this case, the chemistry involved is on the paper or plastic strip. The adhesive on the tape is sticky from the start and pressure makes it stick to the pane. OK, Pablo, it's not exactly the coolest way to go up there because you need an insane amount of preparation time. Yeah, but once they're on, they stick. At least that's what our chemist claims. Will they really stick? There are 10 meters to climb up and the climber weighs a good 70 kilos. Hey, Tom, wow, you made it. And how was it? Not a single one fell off. Great, worked really well. Mark, we'll have to come up with something special. You could work with a vacuum. I thought of something like this, a plunger that you can put directly on the glass and it sticks on. Yeah, but can it take any weight? You have to stand on it. Okay, maybe not this thing, it comes off too easily. Nice idea, but there's no way we're going to do it like that. I wouldn't say that, there are professional tools too. The physicist has brought eight suction lifters. They're also used by glaziers to lift window panes. A suction lifter carries 50 kilos. Tom weighs a bit more, so will they take his weight anyway? The great thing about a vacuum is it grips immediately and can also be released quickly. But how does it actually work? When you press the levers, the air between the glass wall and the suction pad is forced out. A vacuum is created. This causes the air outside to press the pad against the wall and it sticks firmly. When the levers are released, the air flows back in between the glass and the pad again and it no longer grips. This is exactly the principle that takes Tom all the way to the top. OK, both methods work, but the advantage of the suction cups is, of course, that you can take them off again immediately. You don't leave any traces. That's why the winner in this round is physics. Mark, we did a great job. 
the adhesive tape now has to be tediously scraped off. The suction pad, on the other hand, can be quickly attached and detached. A point for physics. That makes it 1-1. Task 3. Sticking the non-stickable. Teflon is known for the fact that nothing sticks, not even glue. It's virtually ungluable. We're trying it anyway. Two Teflon sheets are to be glued together in such a way that not even two cars can pull them apart. It's definitely, it's definitely not a frying pan, but it's still Teflon. How are you going to stick them together? I've got a special strategy here. And it looks like this. First, a little trick. Roughen the Teflon. That way, the chemical pretreatment can work better. This ensures that the adhesive will stick to the surface later. The adhesive consists of two components, which are in two separate chambers inside the tube. A binder, here the yellow ball, and a hardener, here the red ball. When applied, the two react with each other and cause molecules to bind together that don't want to bond to each other at all. This triggers a chain reaction. More and more molecules combine and the adhesive solidifies. But this takes about 24 hours. And how does our biologist hope to glue non-stickable Teflon? She also first roughens up the Teflon sheets. And then... This is tree resin. Originally seeps out of trees. It's still extracted from trees today. Tree resin was used for a very long time to seal ship hulls. But we have to turn it into liquid somehow. Exactly, and that's why we're heating it up. Our biological glue is tree resin. It drips out of tree bark and is nice and sticky. Sticky enough for Teflon? Heating initially reduces the cohesion of the molecules. The resin becomes liquid. This allows it to bond with the surface much better. When it's applied, the resin cools again. It becomes solid and sticks together. The resin cools down quite quickly and therefore solidifies, so now we can move on to the test. And it goes like this. Two cars, 240 horsepower and two Teflon plates. The tensile force on the adhesive seam is equivalent to a good ton. And the tree resin can withstand that? Fuck. Guck mal. Ach scheiße. Oh my goodness. It seems not. The resin can't even hold the Teflon blocks together. Our glue already gave up on the way to the car. So, that didn't work. Now it's the turn of the chemical Teflon glue. That should be able to beat the lousy result of the tree resin, shouldn't it? I'm pretty sure about this, but there's always a little risk involved. Why? Yeah, if it starts to split at one corner. A hairline crack is enough. Exactly, a tiny crack's already enough. Okay, then it's going to be quite exciting after all. Right, take it away. The two cars start slowly with the rope taut and only then accelerate. Both cars have a good ton of tractive force. The red car is lighter and the blue one just pulls it away. But the adhesive seam doesn't break. That's pretty impressive. We increase the pulling force by not tensioning the rope beforehand. This way, both cars have a run-up. The tractive force is the equivalent to more than two tons. We get everything broken sooner or later, but it was a very impressive performance, wasn't it? We think so too. The point clearly goes to chemistry. That gives us a final score of 2 to 1. Pablo, come here to me. You and chemistry are the winners. I've got no other prize for you, so here's a Teflon block with tree resin on it. Conclusion, chemistry wins the battle of the disciplines, but homemade glue can definitely be used for handicrafts at home.